Stitch your gym is back baby. The last time we saw this backstabbing pirate was over two and a half years ago and all that time we have been waiting for his story to continue. But was making an adventure instead of a tall tale the right choice and does the story satisfy us enough after such a long wait? It's time to get opinionated and give my review. So let's get into it and let's subscribe. Let's, let's, oh, let's do that too. So just like usual, we need to talk to Lorena to start this adventure. She mentioned Belle said something about Stitcher Jim, and if you want, we can even read some dialogue to catch up with Jim's past shenanigans. But if you want, you can also watch this video. After talking to Lorena, we set sail to Liar's Backbone, Jim's old lair during the time he was serving Flameheart. Inside, we find Belle, and she tells us that Flameheart's rebirth is closer than we think. She also suspects Jim to be the Herald of the Flame, the person who precedes the actual resurrection. But she needs to be sure, and that's where we come in. Our first stop is the Devil's Thirst, the island above Flameheart's lair and Jim's last known location. When sailing in the roar, you might notice the volcanoes are much calmer than they used to be. The lore explanation is that this is a sign of the time of resurrection being close, but gameplay-wise it just ensures that Billy and Timmy don't get sunk while trying to complete this adventure. When arriving at the Devil's Thirst, we meet up with one of my favorite characters, Arthur Pendragon. If you still aren't getting Heart of Fire vibes, you should be getting them now. Pendragon also wants to know what happened. He still wants a firm word with Jim after what he did to his crew. You know, trapping them inside the chest of rage wasn't really nice. He hands us the lantern to search for two-year-old visions of Jim to see what happened around the events of the Heart of Fire Tall Tale. Personally, I really like this part. Seeing memories just never gets old and it's a great way to tell a story. You will also find your first Reaper Parrot here. Just raise your lantern near it and you should be good. After the final vision on this island, Arthur comes to the conclusion that Jim probably made his way to a new lair unbeknown to Flameheart which is probably on Ashen Reaches. How Pendragon knows this can be a bit confusing, but when looking at the rowboat, we do see a map of that very island. But before you set sail, don't forget to spot the second Reaper Scout sitting on a nearby rock. After digging up the totem, we use it to open a gold water vault below. At this location, we also find the final Reaper Scout, and at the time of writing this review, this parrot didn't unlock for me or my crew. So if you had similar issues, um, you can probably blame the game. Inside the vault, we find the next vision of Jim. Not only do we see him losing his mind, we also see runes scratched on the walls to help us solve a new puzzle. This one is similar to other vault puzzles, yet different enough to feel new and I love it how they reuse their older content. Such a Jim hiding in this vault also harkens back to his time working for the Gold Orders. In this vault, we also find our first journal. This one is hard to miss since it's also needed to complete the puzzle. It describes Jim trying to cope with being betrayed and him turning his back on Flameheart. When we solve the puzzle, we are rewarded with a note and some loot that's hardly worth it, but since we are pirates, we take it anyway. Thanks to this note, we learn Stitcher Jim is planning to grind all Flameheart's bones to dust to further prevent his resurrection. And since nobody really cleans up after Tall Tales, we can still expect these remains to be on Fentlock Peninsula. When arriving there, we find a memory of Jim being greeted by our favorite edgelord, Flameheart Jr. He talks about Jim's role as part of prophecy. He also tells him he has already been rewarded by Flameheart, but just not in the way he thought. This is obviously him manipulating Jim to do their wishes, and I do feel a little bad for him. When inside the case, we find Flameheart's coffin removed. We do see a vision of Junior offering Jim a drink, which we later learn is the final step to complete Jim's transformation in a true Ashen Lord. When we read the nearby journal, we read about Jim embracing his curse and stitching Flameheart together again. This also means that the cinematic trailer happened around the time this journal was written. Keep in mind that Jim is doing this because Pendragon destroyed Flameheart's skull during the Seabound Soul Tall Tale. And when you take a closer look at the vision, you do see some cracks and holes in the skull, which is a nice detail. This should also be your last vision, and there should be no doubt anymore that Jim is indeed the Herald of the Flame. 
when we meet up with Belle, she tells us that another ritual is needed to fully complete the body. This ritual is held on Molten Sands Fortress. Once you get near to the ritual, the battle with the Herald of the Flame will start, and I really like his design. Yes, it's a reskin of other Ashen Lords, but honestly, that's what I expected. Jim looks great, and he has some voice lines of his own. Overall, this fight feels like a great climax to this adventure. At least, it should be. Sadly, Jim goes down like a little bitch, and the fight was hardly a challenge. When one of our crew came back from checking up on our ship, he was already defeated. Considering all of us were waiting for this battle for over two years, it felt pretty disappointing. And this might be the biggest downside of this adventure. After the fight, we head down the tunnel and speak to Pendragon. In this chamber, we also find the remains of Flameheart. Arthur destroys the skull yet again, hopefully preventing Flameheart's resurrection once and for all. We also find our final journal here. Jim talks about the drink giving him the wisdom of an Ashen Lord. His head got filled with new thoughts and secrets that allowed him to perform the ritual and complete his transformation. After reading this journal, the only thing left to do is to report to Belle. She seems over the moon for the great service we have done to the Sea of Thieves. But before we can drink our grog, Pendragon appears. He tells us both Flameheart's remains and Stitcher Jim are gone. He feels responsible, but Belle quickly lifts him up, which reminded me of how she taught Merrick to believe in himself during the Lost Sands adventure. Either way, the battle is not yet done and something might still happen during the time of resurrection, which is around the same time as the Festival of the Dam. And here's my quick theory. Since Flameheart's skull is destroyed again, he needs another for his soul to return to. And what skull could be better than the skull of the Great Warrior? The dead might walk again during the Festival of the Dam. Or maybe not. Either way, it's some nice setup to the next adventure, which is also the finale of this arc. So is this a good adventure? I think it is. We have waited so long to find out what happened to Stitcher Jim and we got exactly that. This adventure seems to combine elements of not only past tall tales, but it also references Jim's older exploits. Combine that with the continuation of Pendragon's story as well, small as it is, and you get this nice mix of story and lore that really rewards those lore-loving pirates. I do have one complaint about the story. Jim comes across as a bit too gullible when he decides to join Flameheart again. After filling yourself with hatred for so long, it's a bit weird he just switches over again. Instead of a nice redemption story, his character just falls back to the Jim we knew three years ago. And sadly, there is also one gameplay element that does bring this adventure down. And that's the final battle being so easy. It is so easy that even Kirby players feel insulted. Yes, you do want the less experienced players to be able to finish this story, but for the older sea dogs like me and my crew, it was so disappointing. You want the end of the adventure to feel like a climax, and it didn't. I feel this battle should only have been easy for solo players. You can keep it how it is, but please crank up the difficulty for the other crew sizes. Um, maybe this is a bad idea, um, but I'll, I'll probably hear it in the comments. Uh, speaking about, let me know what you think of this adventure. Is this the conclusion you wanted, or did the final battle also fall flat for you? Either way, thanks for watching, you are awesome, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.